Welcome to a, the 1983 Nobel Prize in Physics, which is a divided prize. Again, it means there's two different projects usually around a common theme. And this theme is stellar evolution. And I am absolutely going to butcher one of the two Nobel laureates names. And I apologize for that up front. So the first half of this went Subrahamayan Chandraskar. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, for his theoretical work on the physical processes uh, that involve the structure and evolution of stars. So it's like what happens on the inside of stars that actually cause them to evolve throughout their lifespan. And a, another uh, physicist named Wilson Fowler for his theoretical and experimental studies of nuclear reactions involved in the formation and chemical elements in the universe. So we're, we're both, we're looking at stellar evolution in both these cases and a little bit different angle with, with, supporting one another on their conclusions, because obviously that, that's important for things to, to kind of make sense together. But uh, uh, let's take a little bit of a deep dive, because this one I think is really awesome, uh, and it, it gets to a point I've been wanting to make for a very long time. So let's take a deep look. First up, the scientist whose name I just cannot pronounce. Um, stars, you know, sort of form from clouds of gas and dust. And when these things are clouds and they're pulled together by, by enough gravitational attraction, energy is released in the form of heat. That's kind of how stars are formed. Um, and when the temperature gets high enough, nuclear reactions kind of kick off. So the star gets ignited and goes poof. In the 1930s, he formulated the theories for the development of stars. So that means you know, sort of 50 years later, um, we all agreed on it. And we all said, yeah, okay, we finally understand what you were talking about back 50 years ago. And we have enough experimental evidence to support it. So he was awarded the Nobel Prize. But think about that. Less than 100 years ago, he did this work that said, hey, look, here's kind of how forms, stars form. And what he showed inside that theory is that when hydrogen, when the hydrogen that fuels certain size stars starts to um, uh, run out, it will collapse and compact into a, a star known as a white dwarf, which is pretty cool stuff. I mean, it it, it was, yeah, less than 100 years ago, but it, it kind of said, okay, here's here's the sort of this stellar process. And we hadn't really observed it. We hadn't really seen like, okay, you know, let's go up and watch a star for its entire evolution. We didn't have enough sky surveys to really get all this stuff down. But here he is coming up with the theory of it um, back, uh, you know, still less than 100 years ago which in the, the history of mankind is not terribly long. Um, it uh, actually, you know, predates us landing on the moon, for goodness sake. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Now let's look at the other half of this, because I think the other half of this brings out some, some additional points that are pretty interesting stuff. So William Fowler. Now, remember, the nuclear reactions in stars are what causes all the radiation from stars coming out. You know, we get these plasma clouds, we get all this stuff. It's all kind of driven by uh, the nuclear reactions at the core. In the 1957, and I'm sorry, in the 1950s, less than 70 years ago, around 70 years ago, William Fowler showed that these reactions also account for how various elements are formed. So the, the, the things that make up the Earth, the things that make up Saturn, Pluto, the moon, you, me, my my kid, my camera on my computer, my iPhone, the iPhone case, all that comes from the stuff inside stars. So Carl Sagan was really right. The cosmos is actually within us. We are made of star stuff. We, we're, we're, we're kind of the way the universe sort of knows itself. So I find it fascinating that human beings walking around, me talking to you across the internet, the elements inside me all began inside stars. And without that, we wouldn't have had the earth. We wouldn't have had water. We wouldn't have the chance for life to evolve. Life then evolves into humans. Humans become that. And so without the stuff inside stars, none of that happens. Which I think is pretty cool. We kind of begin as these nuclear reactions and poof, next thing you know, we have earth and we all get to argue with one another on the internet about different things, which I think is pretty neat. So uh, really cool stuff. If you want a chance to really look at these things, there's some, there's tons of books on, on stellar evolution, and but you, you owe a lot of that kicking off to, to these two guys who did this work less than a hundred years ago. Uh, so think about that in the 1950s, we still weren't exactly sure what was going on inside stars, but we are pretty sure today. We still, every once in a while, learn something new. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's coming along, but not terribly long ago in the history of man. So we'll see you on the next prize. Uh, don't forget to click like and subscribe uh, and we'll see everybody next time.